Hello everyone, and welcome to part 3 of how to make Pong in Unity. So, last time we made it so these bats move up and down. And now I think we're ready to get the ball moving and bouncing between our paddles. But first, I'd like to increase the size of our play area. So I'm just going to drag this out to a size, let's say 10. And, well, probably nine. And this is just to give us a much bigger play field to work with. Let's move our bats to, let's say, 12. And put this one at negative 12. Alright, so here's our scene. And now, what I need to do is make it so the bats stop at the tops and bottoms of the screen. So the way I can do that is just add a hitbox at the top of the screen and at the bottom of the screen. So what I'll do is create an empty object and align it with the top of the camera's scene view. And then add a component, go down to Physics 2D, add a box collider, and it doesn't need to go all the way to the top, there can be a little bit of space and then let's just stretch this all the way to the full screen and the size appears to be like 32 yeah and let's name this top copy it and create one named bottom and put this at the bottom of the screen so now, if I were to go into the play mode and move one to the top of the screen, it stops right at the top, move this to the bottom, stops at the bottom. And that'll also work for the ball, which is important because we need to make sure all of our elements stay within the play area. So now let's get the ball bouncing back and forth. So I'm going to go select this ball object and create a new script named Ball Controller. Now opening Mono Develop. So here we've got our script. Let's think about how we want our ball to move around. So select our ball. Now I want it to move diagonally around the scene, bouncing back and forth between the uh, objects. Now this is actually going to be pretty simple. One of the key elements is to create a physics 2D material. Let's name this ball. What I want to do here is give it zero friction and set the bounciness to one. What this will do is make it bounce with complete buoyancy. So if it were running this direction, it would bounce into the bat and then move backwards at the same speed in the opposite direction. And then we have our bats. However, when the ball runs into the bat, because of the law of conservation of momentum, the bat will slowly move in the opposite direction as the ball travels. So what we need to do is just set the mass to a ridiculously high number and that'll take care of the problem. Alright. So now that we have our scene, let's make the ball moving. So very similar to what we did last time, I want to access the rigid body 2d component and just going to get the component for rigid body 2d and store it in a variable and in this update function we're going to move it so just for the sake of testing purposes i just want to set its velocity to a new vector 2 
where it moves uh, to the right. So let's say 3F and up 3F. And because of this, we'll get our diagonal angle. So now let's see how it works. It should bounce off the top of this. Oh. Oh, wait. I made a bit of an error. So when we do our rigid body dot velocity, it will keep this velocity the same. So what it needs to do is start with this kind of velocity. So in the start function, I'm going to do it here. And this is just for testing purposes to make sure that it's moving around the way we want it to. I'm also going to get this bat in position to move backwards. It does appear to be moving at 45 degree angles when it gets hit by a certain object. However, it is moving a little slowly. Let's speed it up. Let's go 6F. Double it. And a lot of game development is trial and error, just to find a way you like it to play. I do like it traveling at this speed. Oh. That's a problem. So what happened there was that it hit the top of this rigid bo of the box collider. Because of that, it would be better to use an edge collider. However, the slight flaw with it is that for some reason, you can't directly edit the nodes. So we can and because of that, it's hard to get a perfectly flat edge collider or a perfectly vertical one. So it's easier just to make the box collider very thin. So I'm going to do that for both of these. I could also copy and paste, but then I'd have to go back and add the correct script. Alright, so now let's do another test run. And the ball is moving at a pretty good speed. And it bounces back the way we want it to. But if it goes off screen, nothing happens. What I want it to do is increment the score by 1. And based on which side it goes off of, I also want it to reset to the center of the screen and fly off in a different direction at random. So for now, I want to start getting it to reset back to the center of the screen. That's actually very easy. What we want to say is if this.transform.position is greater than or equal to, and then we got to find out where it is off the screen, which is about x equals... 16, but let's say 17, so there's a little bit of buffer. And we want it to be floating point. And we want to check if it's greater than or, or less than or equal to negative 17. And then when it is meeting either of these requirements, we want to set transform.position to a new vector 2, oh wait, or vector 3, because there are three components to our position, and we're going to set it to 0, 0, 0, which is at the center of the screen in the front of the camera. We also want to do this here as well. So now, let's do another test run. It's, oh, greater than or equal to, oh, our transform dot position dot x. Okay, now for a quick test run. So now it flies off the screen, comes back to the center of the screen. And we'll also tweak it so it pauses a bit before actually uh, flying off. And we'll even make it so the velocity isn't going the same way as it does when you start. So that concludes it for this episode. Next time we're going to work on implementing the scoreboard feature.